Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles. You're watching and listening to Lyles Figure Files, part of the Lyles Movie Files brand. So I was all set. I know it had been a second since I recorded a new episode and I was like, I need to talk about something. And I had all these ideas and I was looking forward to doing some other things. But then Monday hit and it was just like an onslaught of news. There was a really cool Marvel Legends reveal and I was really psyched about that and could not wait to talk to you guys about that. And I was on the road because I was trying desperately to find this Marvel Legends Nova at 4,000 Walgreens it felt like on Monday. No success. You're not going to see him on my what I bought this week uh, section. No Nova, no nothing on that front. I really hate the way we've got these Walgreens exclusives now. It used to be if they had something you could find them really easy if you were out doing the hunt out there often enough. Not the case any longer. Now it's just like, you're just gonna have to wait till the truck comes, camp outside like it's Black Friday or something. But the big news for this week that just blew away everything was the big reveal that AEW has signed an, a license, a partnership with the Owen Hart Foundation. Dr. Martha Hart has signed off on this. So that means we're gonna get an Owen Hart tournament in AEW and the winner is gonna get a cup that's kind of cool because of the, you know, uh, Canadian aspect of Owen Hart's career. Um, and he's going to be a playable character in the AEW video game. But most importantly for us is we are finally going to get a modern era Owen Hart figure with tremendous 2021, 2022 likeness. This is my rocket danger Owen Hart from when he was part of the Nation of Domination, when he teamed up with Jeff Jarrett. That's the last Owen Hart figure I have of any use. I have grabbed these Kenny Dystra figures with the intent of one day possibly turning them into a Defining Moments Owen Hart Hart Foundation version. Now these head sculpts really are okay. And I've seen some really fantastic customs using that head sculpt as a base. But I needed an Owen Hart. Owen was one of my favorite wrestlers from the 90s. He just did that whole role as Brett's bratty little brother to perfection. He was a really great wrestler and he was responsible for so many of those iconic WWE moments from the basically the start of the new generation to the to basically the middle phases of the Attitude Era. So there was so much stuff that he was involved in. And it was always this thing of, man, I wish Mattel could get us an Owen Hart figure. Mattel has provided us figures that Jax just wasn't able to. Ray the Dragon Steamboat, Macho Man Randy Savage, top two on that list. We also got the Von Erichs from them. There are a few figures from Jax that we did get that we haven't been able to get from Mattel. And Owen is absolutely one of those major guys. So I'm really excited. The only question is, what kind of figures are we going to get from him? I assume, like the Chris Jericho figure from his time in Mexico, we'll probably get something with Owen in his Stampede era. Here's a look at him as North American heavyweight champion. Um, typically wore three stars, lightning bolts on the side. There's another Stampede attire. I don't think we're going to have any problem getting those figures. I think those will be super easy for jazz wearers to put out. And the only question is, what kind of bad taste the WWE will do in terms of allowing other likenesses of Owen Hart in their figure line? Now, for, there's a list. I mean, there's like 12 Owen figures I want. And if WWE does not try to pull this really super bad taste, no, you can't do these looks because they're licensed and restricted to us. I love to see a King of Hearts when he won the King of the Ring. Owen followed Brett in 94 by winning the tournament. And this was this his big moment to, I guess, the top of the card, the main event level. He won this thing. He proved that he could do the exact same thing that his big brother Brett did. So he's on all pink here. A little different than the normal black and pink. But I really like this out for him because we typically see more black with a heavier emphasis on black and pink on Brett figures. We got to get one, you know, with with this King of the Hearts logo. I'm hoping this is something we can get. 
Um, otherwise, maybe some customizers can do it. We'll have a legit Owen Hart. Hopefully, we'll get the long-haired um, sort of beard. Because this tag team with Yokozuna was great. And one of those forgotten tag teams that people don't talk enough about. But they're a really good tag team. Which also kind of makes me wish that Mattel would hurry up and get smoking gun figures done sooner rather than later. If possible. I mean, we do have a, a Billy Gunn, even though he is in AEW. So maybe smoking guns are still on the table. And of course, from when he was just killing it with the Hart Foundation, when he was the European champion, tag team champion, uh, Slammy Award winner. So we got to get that look. Of course, from his time with the British Bulldog as tag team champions. Basically, it's black and pink and the logos kind of change up. What are you saying? He's got the best heart, king of hearts. So I hope that's not something that's so restricted under the WWE license that they can't do this kind of setup for his attire. Otherwise, customizers who make cloth outfits are going to make a lot of money, I assume, finally delivering Rocket Owen Hart figures the way we want. Um, then, of course, the crew cut look. And I think that that's another look that they should explore because this is another signature look for him. Back when he was fighting with Stone Cold, when he was, you know, him and Davy Boy had the crew cuts and Brett was the man. And they were just doing their thing as a Heart Foundation. One of my absolute favorite faction runs of all time. So being able to actually complete, complete that faction with an Owen Hart that maybe doesn't quite look the same, but actually will fit in decently because AEW Jazzwares figures work pretty well next to the Mattel Elite figures. That'll be a great thing. So then, of course, we've got the Blackheart. This is when he returned following the screw job, when his contract was still going with the WWE, and he had to stay there. So he came back, become the European champion, and they had a terrible, crappy feud with Triple H because we needed to get Triple H over. Um, but yeah, I like this attire, too. Again, this is another thing. I don't know how much WWE can control this because it's not really anything in particular. There's no lettering no logo no reference to the heart foundation just colors so hopefully that's still on the table and then finally the version that i've got here danger because honestly you've got to have owen with rock's nation of domination so you see d-lo you got mark henry still waiting on the nation version of the godfather but now maybe we can get owen hart so we can complete that full unit of rock squad so I am ecstatic. I am really looking forward to see what Jazz Warriors does with this. They're already starting now. They've got CM Punk. They've got a Daniel Bryan, I'm sure, coming. We've got some Sting figures featuring his modern look. But now I'm really anxious and ready to start seeing some classic versions of Sting to go along with these guys to fight my WWE Elite um, or Defining Moments or Ultimate Edition figures. Uh, there's so many different titles and lines from WWE with Mattel, but so many possibilities, so many options, and I hope we see a ton of them. So really good news. But there was some crappy news because some people were kind of being, I don't know, maybe they're just captivated and spellbound by WWE. They were upset with Dr. Hart for signing off on this partnership with AEW. I mean, it's like she has no obligation to the WWE. And you know, she's just not feeling them. And that is perfectly within her right. Every time, anytime. So everybody mad that she's not doing this with WWE, really think about it. Because, dude, seriously, we got Owen Hart. He's back in here. And to me, that was way more important. And I think that was the crummy thing with all this. Because Owen's legacy was, I don't want to say hidden, forgotten, but it wasn't being celebrated because of Dr. Hart's feelings for the WWE. Again, totally understandable, but now we get to celebrate Owen in a way that we have not been able to for so long. And this is amazing. And, you know, AEW is going to do it right. We're going to have all these tournament cup winners year in, year out. Packages on Owen Hart. AEW does a really good job with those. So I am really looking forward to seeing all the potential from this. And having Owen Hart going against Kenny Omega and Daniel Bryan in the video game and in figure form. So it's going to be amazing. I am so excited about this. All right, so then over the weekend, it was Batman Day. So for all of you celebrating, hope you enjoyed it. McFarlane Toys revealed their Batman 3 Jokers line. This is based off of the 
We've got to make it else worlds because we have not figured out what the heck we're doing with our universe any longer. So it's just a what if story, imaginary tale that spins off of normal, regular events in the DC universe. So in this one, Jeff Johns and artist uh, Jason Fabok put together this really cool story. Batman, Batgirl, Jason Todd, aka Red Hood, find out that there's more than one Joker running around. And we don't really get a real explanation as to how these three Jokers came about. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it's a really good story, great art, and this was a book that I wasn't too mad that McFarlane and Toys wanted to tackle. Mainly because it's six main figures, main characters. We can get everybody in one shot. It's not, yeah, but you didn't do this. You didn't get Ratcatcher 2. You didn't do etc. You know, it, there's no Rick Flag. So this one, we get everybody in one shot. We can move on to the next Batman storyline he wants to tackle in figure form. So first up, of course, got to start with Batman. This outfit looks really good in the comics. It looks good in figure form. I'm a little bit... Uh, leery about that head sculpt and the neck combination i feel like his head is just a tiny bit small and this has been this weird thing with mcfarlane with mcfarlane they have done so many batman figures but i'm not sure if i have the batman figure in my collection yet which is weird because they've had so many cracks at it their batting average would be very low if we're just looking for, hey, what's the definitive Batman figure? But this one looks pretty good. I think this is about as close as I could reasonably expect to get with the modern era Batman. I am kind of looking at that crotch area because I'm thinking, where are the black tights? That's not, um, of course, what the outfit was like in Three Jokers. This is accurate, but I'm kind of thinking how hard will it be to find some black paint and fix it up? So Batman looks pretty good. Next up is Batgirl. She is basically a repaint with a little bit of retooling off of that original Batgirl that was like eight feet tall and looking down on Nightwing and everybody else like those old school Marvel Legend lady figures. Um, I don't like the head sculpt. It looks a little too harsh. I think Fabric drew a younger looking Barbara Gordon. This one looks a little hard like she is. 50 years old she's been doing this thing for a really long time and she still looks super tall i'd love to see her in a scale shot with batman and nightwing and red hood just to see how she scales up with them i like the colors of that outfit though they look really clean black and yellow all over and redhead showing of course i just ah there is something about that head sculpt that i am just not in love with and that grapple gun looks like there is no way she could ever carry that comfortably it's massive and the same deal with the battering i don't i don't know if they haven't quite figured out how to scale weapons properly but everything looks gigantic to these these figures and their bodies it's just weird so hopefully that's something over the next few years they can fix because it remains an absolutely big problem next up the red hood now i think this figure looks pretty good it's not the typical batman style version of red hood but i think for everybody that missed out on that figure that's now super expensive this is a really nice option and a good way to get red hood in your collection he looks solid um the red body armor piece doesn't seem like a big you know departure from other versions of him and kind of almost imagine that red r circle there with that outfit like this is part of a robin outfit and he's just wearing a hood now with with it as you see no guns though he's got a big crowbar which is part is which is important for the storyline but i'm still kind of thinking dc needs to ease up on this stuff because i mean you've got your characters killing cursing etc and they can't have guns with figures that are clearly not intended and based off of storylines for kids so figure it out but yeah we we need some guns with these guys the crowbar is cool but red hood at least definitely needs a gun I'm not saying Batman needs one, but as appropriate and when needed, the characters that need guns should just have guns. All right, so there are three versions of Jokers, shockingly, for a line based off of three Jokers. This one is the criminal, and this is kind of the going to the nightclub Joker. He doesn't have his typical wacky tie. He's got like a bow tie, stylish, like he's got a little tuxedo thing going. His cane, again, looks a little bit too big for him at that scale. 
I think everything should be sized down. Maybe a little bit. Maybe like two times. Anyway, a little big. I'm not loving that head sculpt. It looks a little too serious and too focused for Joker. Granted, this is not the clowny, ha ha ha, hoo 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 version that we've seen from other takes on Joker. This one is far more methodical, but there's just something a little too serious. There's no deranged look in this Joker. Now, this is a deranged Joker, but it also looks like he's kind of wearing a, a Robin mask because of the way that heavy eyeliner is around and the shading. This is sort of like the Caesar Romaro version, Romano version from the 66 uh, TV series. I like most of this, but that green is a little too dark. You see he's got the crowbar, no gun, but Joker wouldn't have a gun necessarily except for a bang gun, which is something I think they could have thrown in here. But again, it's a case where that head sculpt is not the best. And I just kind of wish they could figure this out here in terms of the scaling. He at least comes with a joker fish so that's something else you can add and i'm really getting to the point where i like what mcfarlane is trying they're trying to knock out these various batman subset lines but i'm looking over at what mafex is doing and i just want them to do 10 maybe we could just get a figure a month from them like that dc multiverse uh online deal where you get a figure a month and hopefully it's somebody you want not a super size modern version of rocket red um but yeah I, I like what they're trying but these figures just aren't quite getting it done for me and i'm excited i got the Catwoman. i'm looking forward to getting hush and azrael and black suit superman and i kind of wish that they could expand to go into more stuff but yeah for retail for 19.99 i think mcfarland is really doing a good job but it's not quite getting it done for me, especially seeing what other companies are doing, specifically Marvel. Speaking of Marvel, let's move on. Oh, Doctor Strange was a big reveal that we got uh, courtesy of Book uh, from ACBA. Uh, articulated comic book art. Follow his channel. It's a really good job. He has a full review of Doctor Strange already thanks to Hasbro sending him a uh, preview copy. So this version of Doctor Strange finally makes it so I can question if I want to get rid of my toy biz, Doctor Strange. Again, this was an epic figure. Honestly, the biggest problem I have with this guy, he just was, I mean, these little slender legs, if you can see, they are so tiny and small and scrawny and they don't allow him to stand anymore pretty well. And his cape comes off, which is something I'll talk about a little bit later. But I thought this was a really, really nicely done figure. You see the big difference in the blue on the tunic, the lighter blue, darker blue, the orange gloves, the orange belt. And this head sculpt is still really phenomenal. It is one of the best ones that ha Toy Biz did. And it just really looks good. And the cape, the only issue with it was it just stopped much movement. So you couldn't ever really do anything with them. This is why Hasbro went the route they did with this figure. It has the cape that's kind of got this Thor feel where it's above the shoulder. So you can move it out and swing it and do all kinds of things. This cape is not removable. It's glued onto the back. But I'm... I'm I know a lot of people online don't like this look and they don't like the way it's set up, but just for doing anything with Doctor Strange, because you want him to gesture, you want him to move his, you know, do things. This is a shell and this cape is not really hard. As you can see, it moves around reasonably well enough, but he's not really able to do much of anything outside of this really hard posing. So I like this implementation. If you notice, the head sculpts with this one with the meditation and focus the hair is a little bit different you check out the gray on the temples they go all the way down this other one with eyes open the gray temples are up higher not carrying all the way down and not as feathery i think i kind of prefer the feathered hair look and this is one of those instances like black knight where man you guys have a better head sculpt but there's just a little bit something with the expression that i wish was different and that's definitely the case here um yeah kind of reminds me a little bit more of like burt reynolds with this look definitely a 70s vibe and this one is pretty solid i feel like his head is a little bit too thick um i don't know it's just something that again 
this version had like a thinner head sculpt that I thought worked pretty well with a guy who doesn't need to be thick in anyway. Um, but yeah, you see that the gloves, the cape, and the uh, belt all are the same shade. So there's no orange, which is something that I wish they had tackled. But you can see there's a little translucent uh, deal with the hands. That's a nice touch, but hopefully they can get that fixed. He also comes with an axe, which I have zero idea. I'm not a super Doctor Strange hardcore guy. I think this is from the modern Doctor Strange, so it's a little nod to modern fans because we've gotten several modern Doctor Strange figures, but this is just something they could throw in. So that was a really cool touch. I like the tunic. I really wish they made the blue a little bit lighter with that sculpted element. And the eye Agamotto is closed, if you know. Oh, interesting thing. I really like this edition. This is the uh, superhero version of Doctor Strange where he was just kind of like this blue mask guy or blue headed guy. The neck, of course, was blue. He had some flared boots and flared gloves. So it's a deal where this isn't 100% accurate, but I think this is a nice nod because I think it's basically impossible for fans of that blue man look to get or expect a full version of that figure unless it was just some marvel insider exclusive or something but i like this nice idea and a nice little toss in for fans and of course we got the magical sculpts accessories i don't really hate them here but i feel like they've been coasting on these accessories that and the burst accessory pieces way too long it's time to see some new pieces and with the prices going up, that's the kind of thing we should see that added value. Like, okay, cool, you guys are mixing up. You're giving us new accessories. You're giving us more for our money. Now, repainted Silver Surfer is okay. I like the feathered hair, alternate, meditating, eyes closed, focusing. That's a good idea, but I kind of want more. And, you know, that just comes with raising the prices up. Speaking of raising the prices up, this figure is going to be $26.49 or something like that. It's over $26. And as a special added bonus, it's only going to be available on Walmart, which is so exciting because I know all of us love going to Walmart to track down the exclusive figures. This is, of course, 100, 1 million percent sarcasm because they have been notoriously hard to find exclusives. I hope that this will be a lot easier. I did, I was able to get all the Star Wars Black Series, like over months. Um, the Ahsoka Clone Wars Season 7 wave, it took a lot of notify me when in stock, and I finally got everybody from that wave. So I'm shading Walmart, but I probably shouldn't because I was able to get that. I was able to get the Captain America 80th figure with relatively no problem. I figure if I go to a store five, six times, um, especially if there are a bunch of them in the area that actually stock their figure section, because there's some Walmarts in my area that are like, figures? We sell them? Um, but yeah, so hopefully this will be easier to find than some of the other ones from years past. I know Doctor Strange is an in-demand guy, so it may be a little bit harder to find him, but definitely want him in my collection. I had set up a list of Marvel Legend figures that Toy Biz did, that Hasbro did, that are due for updating and Doctor Strange was one of those guys on the list so I had to scratch him out. But I have another member of the Defenders that absolutely is still on that list and hopefully she will get done very soon because I wanna have my classic Avengers versus Defenders face off and we're getting really close. We got a couple more figures who have never been made before in Marvel Legends. Maybe that's part of that clue. Um, Mantis from the comic book not the guardians of the galaxy version and the swordsman and though swordsman of course is is a double dip because he's a villain and an avenger and he would actually make for a pretty decent repaint with the green uh kree version where he's just a garden man swordsman and i think they just did this empire crossover which featured him again it's really hard for me to keep up with all the super events every other week from Marvel, but I think he was in that as well. Um, so maybe he's going to show up. There's rumors, according to JC, that we're going to get a blue Marvel figure. And I cannot wait to get this guy, put him in my collection, have him on that cosmic shelf, and do do the thing. So 
hoping that is true. Now it's time for my favorite part of the week. I'm gonna break down what I got this week to show you what I'm gonna be reviewing eventually, hopefully very soon on LylesMovieFiles.com. So first up, traveled down to Walmart and actually found some versions, some figures from WWE Elite, Elite and Elated. I was elated to find these two members of Elite 87, Santos Escobar and Candice LeRae. This also includes Asuka. Let's see, there you go. Now we're gonna actually show you. So we got Asuka, Braun Strowman, Otis, and Apollo Crews, all those guys. And of course, the Warlord, the one figure from this wave that I was trying to track down. Because as you know, I'm a super legends, old school flashback fan. I have not been able to find him in four trips to Walmart yet. But I was really happy to find these guys, especially for that $15.99 price tag. Honestly, at this point, I feel like I'm winning. I'm getting over when I get figures that were $20 for $15.99. So hopefully Walmart continues that and keeps stocking figures because that is really the best of both worlds for me. And also, I got the hot mess Chelsea Green. I've basically sworn off basics because the articulation is crummy and crappy. But in this case, this is going to be the only time we get her because she's gone from WWE already. And there's no elite coming. No defining moment. I don't know why I keep saying that. They've killed that line forever. No ultimate edition of her coming through anytime soon. But it was important to get this head sculpt. So in the event that they put together a figure that I want to customize and make elite worthy, I've got her. Target has been screwing me over with my uh, tracks order. I have had to approve five delays and i know a cancellation is imminent so when i saw this guy tracks on the shelf i was very happy so i don't have to deal with approving cancellations for the 30th time um definitely a fan of tracks he's one of my favorite of that second generation transformers not the third or fourth version with hot rod and all that stuff get him out of the way by the way and i finally caved after seeing the new power con versions of these guys coming out i've got the master verse he-Man and you know I had Evelyn and I was like well maybe I'll keep her maybe I won't maybe I don't need to get into another Masters of the Universe line because I've got a fantastic classics collection with just a few missing figures why do you need to get into this one but those 30 points of articulation they won me over and the new sculpts that they've showed for the new figures that are coming really have me excited so yep had to get them and finally because everybody was grabbing on Amazon. I had to join the cool club, club crew as well. Got Titanium Man. And I don't really have a lot of Marvel Select figures. But when there's somebody that makes sense to scale with my Marvel Legend guys. I'm grabbing them. And that's definitely the case here with this guy. So looking forward to getting him. And now I'm really feeling like I need to hurry up and put together a Crimson Dynamo. Maybe Marvel Select will put him out as well so we can have one that works and, you know, looks like a classic old school version. So that's it. I don't know what the heck which one I'm going to be reviewing first. If you have any recommendations, suggestions, anything you want to see me review first, let me know. Like I said, I've got a bunch of stuff coming up here on the on the channel. So thank you as always for watching. I'll be back soon because I've got some Marvel Legends on my hit list that I want to see Hasbro knock out really soon. So stay tuned for that. Hope you're enjoying your day. Thank you for watching and I'll be back soon. This episode of Laos Figure Files has been filed.